In this series of tutorials, we're going to look at how XSI's nonlinear workflow uh, actually operates. We have a number of different tools that can transfer animation uh, across various uh, types of different rigs. We have the ability to reference characters and update resolutions depending on where in the pipeline you may find yourself. There's Delta, which allows you to make localized changes on reference models and offload and share them through a reference model structure. There's a number of solutions. Uh, Gator uh, is another way of working in the nonlinear pipeline, but we're going to build around the model idea. Now, of course, we know that models are uh, nodes that appear in the Explorer that represent a package of data. In the case of the scene route, the scene route is a package of data that contains all of the objects in the scene. At this point, the camera route and the light. If I switch over to the model toolbar, I can create a new model, which is essentially just a model file or a package of data that's stored with my uh, scene file. When you save the actual scene, the model is stored as a child of the scene route model. You'll notice, however, that there is a type of model called referenced. And of course, as a referenced model, we actually deal with a model that's external to the scene. So the easiest way to actually bring it in is to use an empty reference model, which gets brought into the XSI environment, a child of the scene root, as a picture of a sort of a cookie cutter, if you will. Uh, the label for this is reference model, and its state is set to offloaded. If you click on the reference model to open up an attribute editor, uh, we can give the reference model a name that's going to work for us. And since we're working with the Mulcor character, we're going to look at loading in multiple levels of Mulcor model resolutions and managing the animation transfer through this reference model. There's also the idea that Mulcor has things like cloth effects on him uh, that will need to be referenced in as well. And ultimately, we want to even reference in uh, the point cache uh, reference level. So let's start off by giving our reference model uh, a name. So I'll call this the Malcor reference model. And the first resolution uh, I'm going to bring in is I'm actually I'm actually going to create the reference uh, resolution myself. Uh, if I open up the browser, uh, access the models folder, we're going to actually use a reference model uh, low res. So I'm actually going to bring in the advanced rig model. This is the version of the Mulcor character that doesn't have any of the arm uh, arm twist or anything like that. And I'm going to downgrade the poly count. So I'm actually going to select the body geometry and run a quick poly mesh poly reduction on it. And I'm going to increase the preserve quad lines attribute all the way up to one, so we have uh, more or less the same topological layout we had before. And I'm going to increase the ratio to about 86%. So again, I have maybe a 2K poly character. I'll freeze in the operator history. So I have a baked down character now. I'm going to export this version of Mulcor as my low res. The reason I'm doing this is to make for a very light packet of data that I'm going to be moving uh, between. I'm still not quite finished working on the advanced rig yet. It's uh, got a ways to go. And at this point, the animators might be crying for a character that they can just work on. And I'd want to give them the lowest resolution character possible to at least begin blocking in their, uh, their animatics. So the first uh, reference level I'm going to load in is res1, which is going to re refer to our low res. And I'm going to point the resolution by highlighting it and browsing for a particular model. So the low res uh, name is going to actually use the low res rig model that I just exported. So I'll hit OK. And now what I can do is switch between this offloaded, or uh, basically we're just getting a, a model reference uh, rather than any physical character in the scene. If I switch to the low res model, it's literally just importing that model from the models folder. And we can see through the reference model property page exactly where our reference model is coming from. 
So one of the neat things about reference models is that you can expand on them infinitely. There's no real bounds to the number of resolutions you can have. So let's look at building up our reference model with enough resolutions that will allow for safe maneuvering through a, a typical pipeline.